together in this. Uh, we're all together with all of humanity in this challenge. Uh, and the you Ezra know, Hashem, uh, we'll learn something as human beings from this challenge to, to understand how close we are together, that we really are one human family, uh, and learn to work together, God willing. Our goal to the, this evening, today, is the, to work on the sense of community. Uh, one of the major approaches to dealing with the, uh, the coronavirus threat is quarantine, uh, bidud, as they call it here in Israel, uh, and uh, even we're getting to the point of lockdown in Israel. Uh, this isolates us uh, from each other in a physical sense. Uh, and it's very distressing to people. We understand it's, it's very uncomfortable to be isolated and, and restricted in this way. But we should also have a feeling that we're in this together. We're doing this not just for ourselves, but for each other, to protect each other. And we really can work on having a sense of the presence of all of us together on this planet Earth uh, even though we're in, in quarantine, we're all together. So I, what I thought to do is uh, a meditation, which is to say experience the way in which we really are all together, uh, to have a, a method for experiencing this. Uh, and I'd like to set it up with uh, some learning. This is a meditation that's based on uh, one of the most basic uh, meditation methods in Torah tradition. In the Gemara, it's called Shehiya, uh, which is waiting. Uh, in uh, the Derech HaMelech, the Piazetz Nerebi, Kalonimus Kalma Shapira, uh, he calls it Hashkata, quieting the mind. We'll use a meditation method for quieting the mind, which I'll, I'll teach. Uh, but quieting the mind is just the first step. Uh, it allows us to relax and get a little calm, and that's very important today. So we'll do that. Uh, and then we'll move on to using that quiet mind to a greater awareness, uh, in this case, awareness of the presence of each other. Even when we're not in the same room, even when we're not physically near, we are still present to each other. Uh, if we know how to sense that, and if we can connect in that way. And that's what this meditation is for. So, we begin with hashkata, uh, which is quieting the mind. Let me just describe the, the technique briefly, and then I'd like to do it for about five minutes, just for everyone to, to quiet down. Uh, the method, as it comes down to us, is we sit in a chair, and we're all sitting in a chair. Uh, try to sit straight with your back straight, self-supported, uh, feet flat on the floor, hands on your knees. Uh, our eyes are closed for this, and we want to be aware of everything that's happening around us and within us all at once, uh, and get to a point where we, we are really quiet and really open so we can sense everything that I've been muted here. Okay, I'm unmuted. Can I, everyone hear? The, uh, So the, we want to sense everything that's happening around us and in us all at once. Uh, to do this with our eyes closed, be aware, for instance, what's happening within us. We're breathing. Sense the breath coming in at your nose and filling your lungs. It stops for a moment and then we exhale and you can feel the, the muscles of the lungs pushing and the breath coming out of your nostrils. If you get quiet, you can feel your heartbeat uh, or pulses around your body. Uh, there may be sounds, ambient sounds in your room that you're in or around you. Can you listen to those sounds? Uh, our eyes are closed, but we, even when our eyes are closed, you see lights, sort of little flashing lights uh, on your retina. You can be aware of that. Uh, if there's any taste on your tongue, you can be aware of that. If there's any fragrance in the air, to be aware of that. The experience of sitting on a chair, um, where do you feel that? Uh, you can feel how your body is being supported by that chair. 
In the course of this, also thoughts will arise. Uh, this method is called hashkata, quieting, the sense that we would like to quiet down that thinking a bit. There's nothing wrong with thinking, but it takes a lot of mental energy. It can be a little bit distracting. It leads us on trains of thought. So the method that the Piazetsna Rebbe recommends for this is you allow thoughts to arise. They will anyway. Uh, be aware that you are thinking, but don't follow the themes of the thought. Back off, so to speak, from the content of those thoughts and just be aware that the thinking is happening and thoughts will happen and happen and eventually they do quiet down. Okay? The, uh, we want to get to a point where we can be aware of everything that's happening within us, the breathing and heartbeat, and around us in terms of sounds and feelings and even the thinking all at once with a, such a quiet mind that we're taking in everything in the most natural way. It's the natural state of consciousness to be aware of everything that's happening around us. In the course of doing that, you really do calm down. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful method for quieting and uh, feeling a sense of ease and calm. So I'd like to do this for five minutes just to set this up and then we'll go into the learning part. Uh, there's a, I have a little chime, okay. I'll ring this at the beginning, uh, and then I'll ring it uh, at the end as well. Okay, uh, before we start this, uh, let me say I hope everyone's in now. Um, we're dedicating this meditation and this learning, Lezecher Nishmat Fegi Gittel Bas Tzirol Nishmasa Eden. Uh, this is Lisa Strunen's grandmother, Alea Shalom. Uh, all of our meditation tonight, all of our learning tonight, this is, this is her... Uh, Yortzeit coming up shortly on uh, the second day of Nisan. Uh, the Zecher Nishmasa to, in, in her memory, uh, for a continuing Aliyat Nishama. Okay, I will start with a chime. At the end of five minutes, you'll hear a chime again. That'll be a signal to open your eyes. In other words, we hear the chime, we'll close our eyes and try to attain this comprehensive quiet awareness. And then at the end of five minutes, you'll hear the chime again. That'll be a signal to open your eyes. Okay, here we go.
Okay. You know, I have to say it's a beautiful thing to be meditating with all of you, even though we're not in the same room, but to know that we're all scattered as we are around the planet Earth, we're all together, and to feel that. And what I'd like to explore now is how to really feel that. What's this experience? Uh, so if you have the text that Mayor sent around, and I want to thank Mayor Paltiel and, and Libno uh, as a whole for setting this up and sponsoring this and getting us all together. Uh, if you have these texts, um, you can find them in the, in the uh, if you press chat, and a, a section will open up to your right, probably, um, a white area, and you can download the um, what's called Hebruta Jewish Meditation there. Uh, if you don't have it or you can't find it, uh, just listen along. Uh, I'll be reading out everything and uh, hopefully clearly. So our goal now is to take that quiet mind, that open mind, and which is a beautiful thing. It's pure attention. And now we want to deepen that attention into a cognitive awareness. Uh, not just aware that everything is happening around us, but the meaning and the connection of everything happening around us. Uh, so I thought to bring, begin with a text from the Gemara Chagiga, which you can find. Uh, it's focusing on a verse, it's playing with a verse, from Devorim 4.32. It's at the top of the page. The verse goes like this. This is Moshe Rabbeinu talking to B'nai Yisrael. For ask now concerning the first days that were before you, and I have this in bold, from the day that God created mankind upon the earth, and from the end of the heavens unto the end of the heavens, has there ever been anything like this great thing? Has anything been heard of like it? Okay, so kind of a literal translation I did of this. What's Moshe Rabbeinu talking about here? It's Matan Torah the greatest event in human history. Uh, have you ever heard of anything like this? And the section of this verse we're interested in is what's in bold. From the day that God created mankind upon the earth and from one end of the heavens to the other end of the heavens, has anything ever happened like this? So in the Gemara Chagiga, Rabbi al -Azhar, who actually lived up in our area near Tzfat, says, the first man, it's the first human being, was from the earth to the heavens. It was extended from the earth to the heavens. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, as it says, from the day that God created mankind upon the earth and to the end of the heavens. Okay, what's he doing here? He's playing with the verse. The verse says, from the day God created mankind upon the earth and to the end of the heavens and to the heavens, have anything been heard like this? But Rabbi Lazar is playing here, but with a, very serious purpose. The first human being, and this is actually Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, was from the earth to the heavens. He extended, he and she extended from the earth to the heavens because the verse says, from the day God created mankind upon the earth and to the end of the heavens. He's being playful here, but he's got a point. But when he and she spoiled, in other words, when Adam and Eve um, ate the the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil became spoiled. The Holy One, blessed be he, placed his hand upon him, them, and diminished him. As it says behind him before you hemmed me in and you placed your hand upon me from dealing. Okay, what does he mean here? The original human beings, Adam and Chava, extended from the earth to the heavens. Does this mean that they were very tall? Okay, hold the thought. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav, you know, these are two Amorayim from, uh, from Bavel, Babylonia, quote, the first man and woman was from the end of the world until the end of the world, not just from the earth to the heavens, but from the end of the world to the end of the world. As it says, from the day God created mankind upon the earth and from the end of the heavens unto the end of the heavens. Same verse, he's phrasing it a little, a little bit more, a little differently. What's his point? The day that God created mankind on the earth and from the end of the heavens unto the end of the heavens, he's saying that, that, ex, that expresses the, the, 
the dimensions of the first human beings. They extended from the end of the heavens to the end of the heavens. But when they spoiled the Holy One, blessed be, he placed his hand upon them, diminished them, etc. The same, the same idea. Uh, the, then the Talmud asks, if so, the verses contradict each other. These would be two different dimensions. Uh, it's actually comparing radius and diameter, but we don't have to get deeply into that. The Gemara's answer is this and that are one measure. That it's not about space. So what is it about? The first human beings, according to Rabbi Allah, are extended from the earth to the heavens. The first human beings extended from one end to the other end of the universe, according to uh, Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Rav. What are they really talking about here? They're not saying that uh, Adam and Chava were originally uh, very tall or very fat, or when they lie down, they were very long. That's what, not what this is about. Uh, there's something much deeper going on here. So let me approach this by asking us a little bit of an experience question. Uh, are we essentially, are our minds in our bodies or is our body in our minds? Okay. Is your mind in your body or is your body in your mind? You know, if you're looking around at other people in the world, you look at bodies and you say, you're, you're sort of into it that there's, a mind somewhere associated in, in that body. But what, how, do you, how do we really experience reality? You take a look at yourself, look down at yourself for a moment. Is your mind in your body or is your body in your mind? The way that we really experience ourselves is that our body is in our mind. When we look down and we can see our bodies, our body is in our mind, really. Uh, to, the, to think of our mind as in the body is a second step. Uh, we get that reflecting of other people, but our experience is our body is in our mind. Not just our body. The room that you're in is in your mind. If there's another person in that room, that person is in your mind. Uh, the world outside the room is in your mind. And not just the immediate world, but the entire universe is in our minds. That's how we experience reality. The world is in our minds. Okay. And this really is, this is what um, Rabbi al and Rabbi Huda in the name of Rav are really talking about. The first human beings, their experience of reality was such that for Rabbi al they extended from the earth to the heavens. They're, they experienced the world. It, the world is in their minds, and their minds extended from the earth to the heavens. Or they experience all of reality, the whole universe, from one end of the world to the other, and they realize it's in their minds. When they sinned, whatever they did wrong, they diminished their sense of themselves such that, and this is how most of us seem to operate most of the time, we think that we're these little people with minds maybe in our little bodies, anywhere from five to six feet tall or whatever, and that's all we are. And we come to limit ourselves as if we are just these little bodies. The original human beings realized they, their self, so to speak, if you want to speak this way, encompassed all of reality, everything. There's never a time since the moment you were born to the end of your course in the, on this earth that you're not in the world. In that sense, the whole world is a, as much a part of who you are as our own individual bodies. We may privilege our bodies because they give us a lot of stimulation, but we are also getting stimulation and sensation and knowledge and information and connection from the whole world as much as from our bodies. In fact, you, one could say, and there are mystics who do say, that anything in the world is as close to me as my body is to me, because it's all just in the one consciousness. Uh, the, there's a, we, not even just mystics, uh, those of you, those of us who, uh, from uh, Massachusetts, you know, one of the, the great poets of Massachusetts was Emily Dickinson. Um, you know, 19th century poet, wonderful poet, the, the Bell of Amherst. 
Uh, she has a, a poem. It's a beautiful poem. Let me just read this. Uh, you, you don't have this on the text, but I thought just to bring this in. Emily Dickinson says, this is poem um, 126 in her collection. She says, the brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side, the one the other will include with ease, and you beside. The brain, I mean, she, that's, you know, the seat of consciousness. Consciousness, says Emily Dickinson, is wider than the sky. Because put them side by side, the one the other will include, our consciousness includes the sky. We may think of the sky as bigger than us, but frankly, our consciousness includes the sky. The brain is bigger than the sky, wider than the sky. It includes the sky and you yourself and everybody else with ease. The brain is deeper than the sea, she says. For hold them blue to blue. The one the other will absorb as sponges buckets do. The brain is just the weight of God. For lift them pound for pound. And they will differ if they do, as syllable from sound. It's a beautiful poem. Emily Dickinson's point is that if we understand how we experience reality, our consciousness encompasses everything. And Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve had that consciousness that they are the archetype of human being. And every one of us has that consciousness in potential. We, in truth, if we access it, you can, you can experience the world that way. Uh, the farthest star of the universe is as much a part of who I am as my body. The sun in the sky, uh, in the, uh, when you see the sun, that is as close to you as your body is because they're both in consciousness and consciousness is not defined by space. If it's in consciousness, my body is close, the sun is close, other people are close, everything's in consciousness close. Everything is close. So that's the point of the Talmud here. So the first step that we'll take in our meditation, because it's, it's one thing to learn this, we want to experience this, not just talk about it, but have the experience of our consciousness extending from the earth to the skies, from one end of the universe to the other. That's a good start. I want to take this deeper. So if you have the texts, we're going to continue down. If you don't have them, just follow along. There's a verse in Proverbs. It says, as in water, face is to face, so is the heart of a person to a person. In other words, the idea is if you look in the water and you see reflection face to face, so we see our own reflection, but so is the heart of one person to another person. We mirror each other's hearts. Rashi, great commentator on Tanakh, says, that this means the face that you show in water is what appears to you. So is the heart of a person to a person to one's friend. According to how a person knows that his friend loves him, so he shows him his face. To put that together, it's a literal translation, but Rashi is saying that we have a mutual awareness of each other and a mutual empathy. We sense the love of another person. We sense the love of a friend, and we respond to it with our own love. Okay? We, we mirror each other's emotions. Uh, the next commentator of David Altshuler, 18th century Eastern European, he says, as in water, this verse means, just as the way of water is to reflect a face similar to the face that looks at it, if cheerful, cheerful, if sad, sad, so too is the heart of a person to a person. If a person's heart is good towards his friend, his his friend's heart is also beneficent. If negative, then he is negative. So he takes it just a little step further. We're, we have empathy for each other, and this empathy is mutual. And we, you know, all of the feelings that we have for another person are sensed by that person, and all the feelings that that pers other person has, we can sense as well. And you know this, you have a, a kind of intuitive, empathetic sense. Okay, take it a little further. Rav Chaim Ibn Attar, the Orachayim, great Kabbalist from Morocco and then moved to Eretz Israel, says in the Orachayim, it's human nature that when an idea is born in the heart of one member of a pair, also in the heart of the other is roused an aspect of that memory. 
For hearts revealed hidden secrets, as they say, as in water faces to face, so is the heart of a person to a person. They pay careful attention to the eyes, the forehead, the words, and knowledge grows until the sermon is completed. His point is, not only can we um, reflect each other's feelings empathetically, and we do, uh, and this is done in a, a very intuitive way, but even ideas can be, be transferred from one person to another person intuitively, uh, call it even telepathically in a certain sense. Uh, that, that, and so this is even an even more intimate sense of connection that we have with another person. And this is without, without expressing it in words, without expressing the idea in words, just when an idea, when we think an idea in our mind, uh, it can often happen that that idea will arise in the mind of another person close to us. You turn the, if you continue with, or turn the page and uh, I'll go down further in the page in the chat. He continues and he says, as water, as in water faces to face, so is the heart of a person to a person, meaning hearts intuit the hidden, whether to love or to hate. For according to how a person prepares his heart to love his friend, so too the heart of his friend understands to love him. And here he's taking this to the point that we don't even have to be present with each other for this to happen. Uh, this can happen at a distance as well. Uh, the, if the feelings, the emotions that we have for another person can be in some way conveyed to them. We want to we understand how this happens. Uh, and they can sense them empathetically, telepathically, intuitively. The, this principle is expressed in Kabbalistic terms by Rabbi David Imad Avi Zimra, the next section down. In a tshuva of his, a response, um, which is a, a halakhic, you know, answer to a halachic question, a legal question in Jewish law. But he takes this into a mystical place. He says like this. They also say in the books of wisdom, for which for him means the Kabbalah, that when a person focuses on his teacher and gives him his heartfelt attention, his soul is tied to his soul. In other words, the student's soul to the teacher's soul. And there rests upon him some of the efflux, some of the flow, the spiritual flow that is upon him, meaning the teacher. And he, the student, receives an extra soul. This is called by them, quote, the mystery of infusion, sota ibor in Hebrew, the mystery of infusion when both are living. And this is what is spoken of when it says, and your eyes shall see your teacher, and this is, and they shall stand with, there with you, and I will emanate from some of the spirit from you to them. All the more so is this so if the teacher fo also focuses intent, one calls unto the other, this to convey influence and that to receive. Rabbi David Avi Zimra, who was the teacher of the Arizal, the Yitzchak Luria, uh, and Rabbi David Avi Zimra uh, eventually moved from Cairo to Tzfat and uh, lived out his life um, successfully in Tzfat. He says that uh, in the teaching learning experience also, uh, there's a spiritual connection that happens. I mean, and he means this not in, in a fuzzy way, but in a very direct way. There's a telepathic connection, you could call it, uh, that there's inspiration that flows from the teacher to the student, sometimes from the student to the teacher. Uh, and this is called the mystery of infusion. This is an essential and very deep Kabbalistic principle uh, that the, the point of it is that our, we share consciousness. We are not just little bubbles isolated from each other. We may be sitting in isolation right now but we are not little bubbles of consciousness that are disconnected from each other. We share consciousness together. Uh, across all space and time, we share consciousness together with all conscious creatures on the planet Earth, with human beings, you, can, you share consciousness with pets if you have them, you share them with, with animal life, you can share them with trees. You can share consciousness. It, consciousness is something that we all have together in common. Uh, that's how we can be sitting here having this conversation, me and Svat, you where you are. Uh, we're sharing consciousness together. We're in a moment together. Uh, this is how we can pretend we understand each other because we're sharing consciousness together. Uh, this shows us that we're deeply connected uh, even when we're physically at a distance from each other. Our consciousness is deeply connected. Uh, what's the basis of this? And then we we're going to wrap this up here. What's the basis of this deep connection? 
The next section down is Rav Chaim of Volozhin from Nefesh Chaim, one of the great, great Kabbalists. He was the, the colleague of the Vilna Gaon, 18th century Volozhin. His book Nefesh Chaim was a classic of Kabbalah. And there he says, let me, let me read the text, just read it out, you get the flavor of it, and then we'll try to explore it. He says like this, an amazing text. He says, the soul of life, nishmat hachayim, of the throne, this is the throne of glory, kisei kavod, is the mystery of the supernal root of the totality of the souls of Israel as one. The totality of the souls of Israel as one, which is higher and more sublime than the throne, than the kisei kavod, the throne of glory. For it is the man that is on the throne, as it says there, and on the likeness of the throne is the likeness of the appearance of a man upon it." End quote. Now that verse that he just quoted is from Ezekiel, first chapter of Ezekiel, verse 26. The first chapter of Ezekiel is this extraordinary opening of the heavens, and Ezekiel sees into the inner structure of reality. He sees uh, angelic beings in the form of a chariot, which was the luxury vehicle of his time. Above that, an expanse of awesome ice. Above that, a throne, it's called the throne of glory in heaven. And on the throne, the likeness, as it were, the appearance, as it were, the similitude, uh, similitude this is a, a bunch of caveats here, of a man sitting on the throne. He has this amazing vision of heaven opening up. On the Kabbalistic tradition, the man sitting on the throne of glory in heaven is not God. God is way beyond that. God is ain't so the infinite. The man sitting on the throne of glory that Ezekiel saw is the totality of the souls of Israel as one. Which means it is our collective consciousness. You know, and you could extend this. Yes, Israel is the essential collective consciousness of humanity in this theory. It's the totality of the souls of all humanity, ultimately, as one. It is collective consciousness. Not unco the collective unconscious, not Jung here, collective consciousness. It is the consciousness that we all share together at all times. This allows us to be in the moment together. Here we are, you know, wherever we are on the, on the face of the earth, we're in this moment together. And not just with those of us who are on this Zoom conference, but with all human beings and with all sentient creatures. We are in consciousness together. And the totality of the souls of Israel as one, that man on the throne, so to speak, that image, that's what knits us, knits us together. That's what allows our consciousness to be shared. That's what allows us to connect with each other, even when we're at a distance. We are, our consciousness is one. This oneness of consciousness is supported by, according to the Zohar, Ahava, God's love, which knits everything together. And ultimately by the the Yichud Hashem, the oneness of God, God's self, is what subtends all of this oneness together. We are all one together, one in consciousness, one in love, one in the oneness of God. We're all together. On the basis of this, uh, Rav Chaim Vital brings a, one of the halachot, one of the minhagim uh, of the Yarizal, of Yitzchak Luria, his teacher, uh, and this is the last text on the, on the page. Uh, based on the verse, Yahapta l'oreacha kamocha, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, because your neighbor really is yourself. Rav Chaim Vital says, and this is the last text, it is necessary that once one is sitting in the synagogue, well, these days we're not sitting in the synagogue, but wherever you're sitting, before one begins to pray at all in the morning, one must accept upon oneself the mitzvah of, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
and intend to love every person of Israel as one's own self. It's a powerful and profound idea and, and custom. So I'd like to suggest that we do that together right now. So here's the meditation. We just learned this. Now let's experience it. We'll start with Hashkata for about five minutes. Then for the purpose of this meditation together, let me guide you through it. I'll do a kind of a narration within the meditation. Um, I recommend this to you for, you know, to take with you after this session, wherever you are, uh, something that you can do at, at home on your own. You don't need me to do this. Uh, though we will have this, this is recorded, so if you need this, you can use this as well. But here's the meditation. After five minutes, you'll hear me start a bit of a narrative. Uh, it will take us through being aware that our consciousness contains the whole universe from one end of the world to the other, from the earth to the heavens. And that within that world are the consciousnesses that we have of each other, our conscious, or each other's consciousness as well. Uh, we'll begin by thinking about those who are our family members who, are may, who may not be with us and to have a Try to have a vivid sense of each of the family members that you want to think about. Have a sense of their, how they look. You know, imagine them in, in your mind. Uh, in, uh, hear their voice. Um, have, a, have a deep sense of their presence wherever they are in the world, if, even if they're not with you. And we'll move from family members we know we're close with uh, to have a sense of everyone that's here on this learning together right now on this Zoom conference all around the world, move to that to all Jews all around the planet Earth, have a sense of the presence of everyone around the planet Earth, move from that to all human beings, we're all together in this, all around the planet Earth, have a sense of the presence of consciousness that, that covers this entire planet together, and that we're part of this and we share it all together as one. At the end of the meditation, we'll do a little tefillah, a little prayer uh, for the protection and the health and the healing of everyone from this, this terrible virus uh, and hope that everyone, everyone on the planet Earth uh, becomes whole and well and learns to work together with a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. That'll be our prayer at the end. Uh, and then at the very end, you'll hear that sound that the meditation is over. So here we go. Five minutes of clearing our minds the way we did at the beginning. Then you'll hear me start the narration and I'll try to take it in a soft voice, kind of flat, to allow you to experience what it is that's being signaled in the narration. Try to experience this for yourself. Uh, and then we'll move, that the, the meditation itself will be for about uh, seven or eight minutes. Uh, and you'll hear at the very end, after the, a, pr a prayer for the welfare of the whole world, you'll hear another chime. Uh, so let's sit up straight in our chairs, feet flat on the floor, hands on our knees as best. If you're sitting in a, um, you know, one of the Asian cross-legged positions, that's fine too. Just keep your back nice and straight. Uh, our eyes closed. Uh, we'll begin with hashkata, with quieting our minds uh, for about five minutes, just as we did before. Then you'll hear the narration, the prayer, and the end of the meditation. Uh, after the meditation, we'll have some time to discuss this a bit together. Okay, so here we go.
as we sit with minds quiet and open, we are aware that our consciousness extends from one end of the universe to the other. The entire world is in our consciousness. The entire world is as much a part of each of us as we are to ourselves. The whole universe, everything in it, and everyone in it is as close to me as I am to myself. Everyone is in consciousness. Let's feel our close connection to the members of our family. Think of someone in your family who might not be present with you right now and imagine them. Imagine them as clearly as you can. Hear their voice. Sense their touch. Feel your love for them. And know that they are with you, even at a distance. And even give them a hug if you wish. Think of another family member. Imagine them. Hear their voice. Feel your love for them. Give them a hug. Think of another family member.
in the same ways. They're always with us. In consciousness. Now let's think of each other. All of us here gathered virtually. Scattered around the planet Earth, but all together in this time, in this moment, in consciousness that we share together. Feel the presence of everyone in this group, those you know and those you don't know. We're all together. We're meditating together. We're connected across distance by our consciousness. Feel the presence of all of Am Yisrael, all Jews across the planet Earth, all around the planet Earth. The collective consciousness of all Israel as one. We share this together, always and at all times. Feel the feeling and fulfill the mitzvah via hafta l'reacha kamocha. To love all Israel, wherever we are. Feel the presence of all human beings on the planet Earth. Sharing this consciousness together. All human beings in the same moment, sharing consciousness at every time, every moment. collective consciousness of all of humanity as one. all human beings in our heart. We 
We pray to Hashem. to save us all from this magefa, this pandemic. To bring healing to all those who are ill. To protect all who are healthy. to help us all learn that we are one human family. To work together ve'ahava, ve'achva, v'shalom v'reut. In love, brotherhood and sisterhood, peace and friendship, May we all be one bond together to do Hashem's will. May Hashem bring healing to this suffering world. When you're ready, we can open our eyes. Piazetsna Rebbe, that's all, would end a meditation with a nigun, special nigun. Um, let me sing this. Uh, you can sing along if you want. Um, just sing it a few times, and then we'll have a little discussion about what uh, we'd like to discuss. The deal goes like this. Horeini Yahed levavi Lira shemecha Horeini Hashem darkecha Ahalech biamitecha Yahed levavi Lira shemecha means, teach me, Hashem, your ways. I will walk in your truth. Unify my heart to revere your name. Okay, um, now I think we can unmute everyone. Uh, do try to keep it a little quiet wherever you are, though, and uh, ask your whoever's with you to quiet down a bit. And if anyone has any 
insights they would like to share, any questions, uh, just anything they'd like to, to express. Uh, we'll have some time for this right now. And thanks, Mayor, for setting this up. You're welcome. I, everyone can unmute themselves as need be. Uh, so I'm not going to unmute everybody. And uh, people can also write questions in the chat. There were some very interesting comments. I don't know if you saw them of Mayor during the not yet. Session. Oh, okay. those are interesting. Yeah. Oh well. I'll uh, I'll cut and paste it so you can see it. Okay, I see it there. Yeah, I'll have to look at it more carefully uh, later. That, right now, let's be in presence with each other. The um, is, does anyone have any any uh, points they would like to raise or anything well, to express? One thing. Uh, yeah. One thing, Maya. Um, the, the beginning of what you were, the nigun you were singing got totally muffled by someone making noises. So the beauty of it didn't come through the whole way. I wish there was a way we could um, just hear what you sang, but um, I don't know if maybe later on you could send that out in, in full in a different way. Because I-, can, I it, it, Yeah, we can send that in a different way. Well, uh, I, I think Mayor tried to open it up so that everyone could sing along, but there was a lot of uh, a noise from that. So it, I understand it didn't work. I'll, we'll, uh, maybe we'll send it with our Talo Rote uh, website. We'll, we'll send that around. Uh, Talo Rote is the meditation society that uh, Ann and I uh, have. And it's talorote.org, uh, which you can also access for more of these meditations. And we really, really, um, really appreciate the partnership with the Note, Liba Note, uh, to be able to work together in such a precious relationship. So we'll do that, Mona. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, if, you, like, if you raise your hand, we can, you know, mayor, mayor can pause, or just unmute yourself and, and we'll, we'll catch it. You know, the mute is down on the bottom left of your uh, screen. Got it. I have uh, one. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I got it? Okay. I just want to say um, I had uh, your site for my mother yesterday, wow. and it was, of course, uh, you know, a rather strange. Uh, uh, your site um, experience. Yeah. So, uh, so that's where I went with the uh, the family, you know, the family meditation first, and uh, it was um, it was quite powerful. And I, and I want to thank you and and the rest of the group, and of course, you know, the whole world for uh, for making it happen. So uh, it worked very nicely. You know, it just it's just what I needed at the moment. Wow, that, Moshe, that's such an important point that you're raising because. Uh, uh, you, you did just, just the right thing. This connection that we can have in consciousness is not limited even to people in, in the world right now. It, it can extend beyond uh, to you know, the, our loved ones you know, who are in, in the next world. And uh, this was a, an essential principle in Kabbalah, is still an essential principle, and it's terrific that you, that you took that opportunity. Really wonderful. The uh, Aliyat Nishmata. Okay. What, what, what's, uh, uh, do, you, do you want to say her name or it's? it's uh, yeah, sure. From a, from a bat, um, uh, Manas and Miriam. From a bat Manas and Miriam. Uh, Nishmata Aiden. Wonderful. Very yeah. important. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I wanted to share my experience um, just with the meditation and um, you know, you had you had mentioned that there was gonna, you know, just pay attention to the ambient noises around me um, during the first part of the meditation. And what occurred to me is what I noticed is that um, everything is just occurring all on its own, um, and I actually can't get any closer or farther away from the sounds that were appearing to me in consciousness. I, I, it's just occurring as it is. And I, I find that whenever I try to explain these things, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm making any sense at all. <laughs> but oh, um, total sense. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I think that is, um, there's a real powerful um, uh, sense of closeness to everything that I'm experiencing of, and, and it's a, it's a closeness that I can't, control that I that I, I just I merely get to experience and get to witness 
And so when you, um, when you, when we switched from that into picturing family members, uh, it was this beautiful acknowledgement of like, I actually can't get any closer to my family members in my mind that I'm picturing. Like they are, it is, they are appearing and I am as close as can be. Yeah. Uh, as close as the sounds that I'm hearing or as close as the vision, the phosphines in my eyes that I see as my eyes are closed. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that that is it. You're, you're right, right on target. That's that's the experience. It's a it's an incredible experience. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're we're held here and we're not doing the holding, and it's all close. You know, the Zohar says it's it's all everything is held together in love. That and it's it's that closeness. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's great great insight. Um, hey, Rabbi Sender. Oh, wow. Great to see you, Reva. That was so beautiful. Um, I, I have two questions. Um, one question is when you were talking about Kemayim Lev, uh, Lev, Lev can, um, Kemayim Panim Panim can live uh, Adam. Right. So how then would you understand people having different feelings for each other? I mean, we definitely have something in the world you know, called unrequited love, or we have where one person wants closeness and the other person doesn't want closeness, or, you know, someone feels frustrated with someone else and the other person feels love. So how, how does that happen if the hearts are reflective of one another? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. The, um, you know, I, I would just suggest, I mean, the, the, the commentators don't raise that next question. It's, a, it's an important question. The, uh, but I would suggest that what they would say is that we sense each other's feelings. Uh, then how we then you know, choose to react to them, we have, we have some latitude in that. Um, we may sense another person's longing or, or longing for closeness. We may accept it and welcome it. We may need to, to in some way, uh, let's say, filter it in some way. Um, so that it doesn't mean that we'll always have the same feelings and that it doesn't mean, unfortunately, that love will always be requited. But, uh, but that we do sense each other's feelings, we do, and if we're open to it. I mean, we're talking here about developing our empathetic sense, which you have in abundance. Um, the, and the more that we can sense that, we can also realize that other people you know, can feel what we're feeling and we feel what they're feeling. So it, this sets up a potential for, uh, for feeling that empathy together, but not everyone will, first of all, be aware of it. Not everyone will access it. Not everyone will, for whatever reasons. Uh, okay. So it's not necessarily that they're harmonizing. It's that we have an ability to be aware of yeah. what no, the other person is feeling. That's a great word that you're using, though, because I think there is some attunement and harmonizing that goes on. Uh, some people might stop it uh, for whatever reasons, and they have their own issues. But, uh, but I think ultimately there is a harmonizing going on. We hope there is, and it's a beautiful word to use for, you know, for human relationships. We hope that there's a harmonizing in the whole world that will be going on. You know, so, uh, so I think that's a potential. That's, that's really nicely said. Well done. Beautiful. Can I ask one more quick question? Sure. So um, the, that young man was sharing about, uh, can I say your name is Matthew, um, was sharing about experiencing his family in consciousness and awareness. So wh how does that differ, differ from the koach and the dame, where we're imagining something and how, how do we know if it's really an experience of consciousness or if it's being filtered through our imagination? Yeah, the imagination, the power of the imagination. Yeah, this, this is a really important issue uh, in Kabbalistic meditation, uh, in particular in other meditations as well. Uh, the, there's imagination that is just illusion and fantasy, and we, we use it. We use it to, to picture things to ourselves and for problem solving and for entertainment in our mind or whatever. But the imagination can be used in a very deep way to um, to to access spiritual reality, and then you know it, there's no guarantee until you really get good at it that uh, that you're really connecting with someone with your imagination um, until you really sense of how to to quiet your mind and 
you know, so the imagination gets completely passive and becomes a sense receptive faculty rather than projecting images. Um, you get to sense it, to get good at it after a while, um, to get comfortable with it, to recognize when you're really feeling something, uh, a presence of someone rather than projecting it. Of course, it, uh, it certainly helps if the person says, hey, you know, I had a really strong feeling about you <laughs> today. And, and you say, well, you know what, I was thinking about it too. You know, so that does happen. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And thank, thank you. It was so thanks. beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Who, um, who's that now? Mona. Uh, uh, yes. How are you, Elena? How are you? And uh, in in Minnesota. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. So my question is with um, what's happening right now is I think it's amazing how the world has changed so fast, like dramatically everything, people sitting at home all of a sudden, right? Children not going to school and uh, the stores, uh, I don't know, do you have the same problem? Like uh, things disappear yeah. from the store. So just so many changes all of a sudden. And I, so apparently we need it. Everything is coming from Hashem. Well. So apparently this is all coming from Hashem. And Hashem is sending us messages. Uh, so, like, I was, I, I was going to ask like, your, your, your vision or your opinion, what, what, can we say what, what kind of message Hashem is sending to us and how we can better feel it, sense it? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I have to say that a, a, there's a lot of, you know, religious leaders are speaking out about what they think the message is. Um, some of it uh, is inspiring. Some of it's downright silly. Um, you have all kinds of that, of that going on now, but it's, it is a time for you know, people of religious awareness to step up. The, uh, we don't know. I, I, from my perspective, God is God. God you know, Hashem is infinite. Um, it, it, there can be many, many messages, not, li not limited to one. Uh, yes, Hashem is always communicating and teaching, teaching us. This is a particularly tough, tough message. Um, there's, you know, a lot of pain here. There's, there's uh, people are dying. Uh, there's also great opportunities here for humanity to wake up uh, and to learn to work together. You know, this is a, uh, a virus that, you know, uh, doesn't discriminate. Uh, every human being is the same. And this is a lesson we need to learn too. So I, you know, I don't know what, you know, there are many, many lessons going on here. Uh, and it's a hard way to learn, frankly. But um, the, I think if you have a, we have a good heart, we want to use this, this time in the most spiritually you know, effective way to realize the lessons of, of support and love for each other, uh, have a sense of, of connection to each other now, have a sense of the, the unity of humanity here, and let's work together. Let's solve this together. If we if we learn to solve this together, it may may help us in, in many other ways. The um, you know, I would suggest that you know we uh, as we something we can take away from this, and this is something that people are saying, but I, I think it's good. Um, let's use every day to connect with people. Uh, call you know or contact in some way three or five people you know in your world, someone that you, you know people that you know. I just was speaking with someone today, said beautifully, you know, he's, he's calling five people a day uh, to connect with them. And particularly, at least three of them are people that he feels he doesn't want to call. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to. You know, people that are a little difficult in his life. And every conversation that he's had with a person that he's called, and particularly people that he didn't want to call because it's been difficult with them, has been a, a, a marvelous conversation. Uh, so this is a, you know, what, what's the lesson here, Elena? I mean, this can be a time of healing, God willing, on so many different levels. We need it, we really need it. Thank Maya? you. Thank you. Yeah, Maya? Mona. Yeah. Mona. So Mona. during the meditation, um, before you spoke, I was, I guess I was at a point where I really wasn't aware of anything but nothing, you know, that, that state where you're just present, but you're not aware of yourself, you're just, aw just awareness. Yeah. And so 
when you started speaking, it kind of took me out of that. And it was, so I guess what I'm saying is that, that level, when you get to that level, isn't that the end result that you want without knowing you're getting it? In other words, to be connected with all of humanity and all of life, isn't that really where that lack of presence of only yourself, you're aware of just consciousness, isn't that the end result that we look for or is that not? Do you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. It's an interesting question. It's a, it's a very, very interesting question. The, the, what we've been working on here, you know, we have a, um, uh, an instructor's course here in Spot uh, for meditation meets once a week. Some of some of you are on the on this right now. Um, there's one level at which in meditation, which our consciousness is open and clear, and we're you know you know perceiving the fact of existence, and that's terrific. That's a that's a very pure state. Uh, but we want to go even into a, a greater depth in this where we're not just perceiving the fact of existence, but the meaning of that. Um, and it's, in other words, to bring a cognitive awareness to the factual awareness, if I can say it that way. Um, and this is a, more of a heart consciousness. Um, so yes, we can be aware of, uh, you know, you can be in the state where you even lose a sense of yourself and you're in a total pure consciousness. Now, the next stage is to engage your heart awareness. Which is, to, which is to receive our being, that we're, and, and to, but it, not as an idea, you know, not as a concept, but to really feel what's going on here. What, we, are, we are being held here and we're not doing the holding. You know, we are being cared for and we're not doing the caring. It's an amazing thing. And it's, it's an effortless presence that we have. And if you open our, if we open our heart to that, world's open. Mona, I mean, you're, we're not in just in this world, we're in all worlds. And it's an extraordinary so, experience. So I think the thing that um, I'm trying to understand is how when you open your heart, you don't become dual again. You stay right. unified. And I, sure. I'm, I'm trying to understand how that can manifest without you stepping back down. So such a wonderful question, very perceptive question. <laughs> it, it, and it takes some, uh, it takes some experimentation and work at it. Um, you'll, you know, as you try to do that, as you try to engage your heart awareness, uh, you may <laughs> try to double and, you know, uh, so let that go. That wasn't the way you want to do it. You want to be able to experience, you know, the, the, the sense of, of wholeness and oneness and even sort of a, a non-being sense that you described originally. Um, if we open that up with our heart, it's, we, it's also a unitive experience. It's not a dual experience. And we want to be able to experience that directly as well. It, it takes some experimentation, but it's, yeah. it's just, these things are hard to talk about. Uh, they're the most, you know, interior, intimate experiences, but you, you're on the track of it, Mona. So, you know, <coughs> play with it a bit flexibly. Uh, you know, get, get a sense of, you know, okay, I, I perceive all of existence in this quiet way. Now let me re receive it. Let me receive it in, you know, in my heart. Let me really appreciate what's going on here on an infinite level. It's okay. an extraordinary thing when you get it. Yeah, get I, it. I, hopefully I can do it. <laughs> Not do it, but, you know, hopefully I can, I can do it and, and on my own. Um, yeah. Any other suggestions? Are you, well, I guess I can talk with you on the side about that. Yeah, let's follow it up on the side. I'm happy to do that. Let's do that. Thank you. Great. Hi, Rev Mayor. Um, hi, George. Hi. Um, I have a small confession, which is that after the meditation, I, I saw that I received an email and I, I was naughty and looked at the email, but the email <laughs> is a, a poem that a friend sent. This is within the last five minutes. Uh, it's it's uh, by David White and called Everything is Waiting for You. And I'll just read a couple of scattered lines. The first line is, your great mistake is to act the drama as if you were alone. Um, to feel abandoned is to deny the intimacy of your surroundings. Surely even you at times have felt the grand array, the swelling presence 
and the chorus crowding out your solo voice. All the birds and creatures of the world are unutterably themselves. Everything is waiting for you. It's a poem by David White. Wow. That's, that's a real synchronicity there. That's George. exactly the word. That's exactly the word. <laughs> wow. I mean, that just says it, you know. Um, if, if, with his permission, can you send it to me? Sure, you know? sure. That would sure. be great. Sure. That, I mean, enough, enough said. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you for that. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, is, is there anyone else that... So I this... Uh, Me, Yeah. Hi. Ah. Hi. Hi. Just want to chime in. Hi. Just want to chime in. Stuart was just here for a second. I don't know if you saw him. And oh, it was it just beautiful to meditate with you. It brought me back, I don't know, maybe 30 years ago when we meditated in Martin's house. Yeah. And I was still blown away. It was that great. Was a laboratory. Exactly. Beautiful. Give, give, give my love to Stuart, too. Great. Beautiful. Guys, it's just a, a what, what a privilege to be with you all. Uh, thank you. Let, let's stay in touch. We are connected. You know, uh, let's realize in our hearts we're connected all the time. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Paltiel for setting this up uh, and leave note. What a, what a wonderful opportunity. Uh, we're talking about perhaps making this a regular uh, weekly occurrence uh, during this time. Uh, we'll let you know we'll, we're working on this and uh, with Livnod and also Talo wrote our organization, so we'll see how this goes. Thank you all. You know, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. From Zifra Yaakov and love to all of our uh, friends in Newton. Oh, yes. Oh, love to you. Yes, Mama. And Sharon. And thank Sharon. you very much. Bye, Tanya. Bye, Tanya. Thank you. Hi, Bela. And stay, stay healthy. <laughs> Tanya, blessings to Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> it's, it's so great to be together with you guys. And we yes. are the same here. It is. Our world just got really small. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. After a yeah. Thank you for arranging this. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, Thank you so good. much. Lila Thank you. Love to you. Thank you. It was so beautiful. Great. Right. So long, Anne, if you're there. Hey, Deborah. Deborah. Hey, care. Take care, call to. Great to well, see you. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And we'll follow you. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Thank you. Great. Good to have you back, Aaron. <laughs>